understand. Amen. We have been praying. Amen. We've been in our series, our praying series. And our praying series today, I'm going to conclude. Amen. I need y'all to be praying for me. Amen. Speak to my heart the purpose and the power of praying. Amen. And so we've been praying. We have our, our, our friends, our lost friends, those that do not know the Lord Jesus, our neighbors, amen, as well. Amen. We have them on our prayer table. Amen. Someone would just kind of move that to the front because I like to keep an eye on it. Thank you, Pastor Darrell. Amen. I um, like to keep an eye on it. If you have an unsaved friend, you can sit it on the platform. Thank you. If you have an unsaved friend and uh, your unsaved friend, um, you have not invited to church or invited, well, they're not saved, they're unsaved. Amen. They don't know the Lord. I want you to put their names. Amen. Bring them up here. We pray over this table every day, be it here or there. This, uh, the names are prayed for, and we're believing God for their souls to be saved. Amen. And then with that, we, um, we are three weeks. Everybody say three weeks. We're three weeks out from Easter. Easter is April 8th. Everybody say April 8th. Amen. It's the second Sunday in April, not the first Sunday. It's the second Sunday in April. April has five Sundays in it. And we are embarking upon our series. And we're going to start a series, and it's called uh, Bring Your Family Back to Life. And that's going to start on Easter Sunday. Bring your family back to life. How many know we want our families to live? Amen. Divorce is on a rampage. It's crazy. There are more divorces in the church than there are in the world. Somebody say that there's a devil loose. Amen. There's a devil loose. That's all it is. I don't understand how two saved people can get a divorce, but that's a different two saved people. Okay. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I can see one saved, one un I can't even see that. But nonetheless, I know that the word of God is true. Amen. And every man is a lie. And I just want to um, pass these out. We're going to give these out. These are tickets. Amen. They're a silent witness. Since you've been witnessing to your friends, Amen. Your unsaved friends about coming, your unsaved loved ones, this is going to be your witness for you. So all you have to do is take a couple of them with you. Take two. How many of you uh, friends that you put on the altar and all you're going to do is just give them a, a ticket and invite them to church. Amen. And we're starting our series. Our first series is starting on Easter. Resurrect your family. Everybody say resurrect your family. Amen. There are things that's going on in life and we need to, we've been praying and, and believing God. We need our families re resurrected. Amen. Is there anything too hard for God? Amen. Jeremiah asked, no, there is nothing too hard for God. God is able to resurrect and put the family back together. Do I have any witnesses in the house that God can put your family back together? Amen. And so we'll be ministering and teaching on that. And then on our second, our third Sunday, which is the 15th, we're going to really have the family feud. Amen. You know the game show, the family feud. Amen. We're going to do a, a little demonstration from our performing arts ministry. Amen, about our family feud, and uh, then I'm going to talk about some of the family feuds that were uh, in the Bible. You just think it's just your family. No, in the word of God, I tell y'all, y'all need to turn off that TV and open up those 66 books. You will find that a lot of stuff that's going on in your house went on over there. Come on, somebody. Did y'all not know that Jesus' great-grandmother was a hoe? Oh, come on, somebody. She was a harlot. Her name was Rahab. Amen. Israel had seed. Amen. Had an inheritance outside of Israel. I bet you thought hoes was just in your family. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. But I thank God for the prophet. Amen. I thank God for the a harlot. Amen. Because it was through her seed came our Messiah, Jesus Christ. Amen. You might have been a prostitute on that side, but God is able to take a prostitute and make her a prophetess. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. God is able to put it back together despite the family feud. Amen. God is able to make it. I told y'all, read this book. Amen. And hallelujah. And then on our fourth Sunday, we are um, going to teach, have a teaching on family matters. How many know your family matters? Amen. Family matters to you. Amen. It should matter to you. Your family matters to God. Amen. And we're going to talk about family matters and and the matters of the heart, the things that goes on in the family. Amen. And then on April the 29th, we have a guest psalm, and some of you probably know him, music pastor Elder Rodney Reigns. He's going to come and minister, amen, and be with us on the, he's a recording artist. We're going to, in his own right, awesome man of God, anointed preacher, anointed singer. I mean, just, he's my friend, and he's going to come and minister um, to us during the service on April 29th. So here's, you don't have to memorize all that. We've written it down for you. 
So all you have to do is just take them in and just invite them out to come. Is that all right? Amen. Come on and clap your hands for the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. If you would, turn with me to Joshua. Amen. Turn with me to Joshua. Everybody say Joshua. <clears throat> and today's message, I'm going to speak to you about is pray the word way. Amen. Pray the word way. Everybody say pray the word way. Amen. From the book of Joshua chapter 1. Thank you, sweetie. Joshua chapter 1. Amen. And glory, if you would read. I'm telling you, there is so much going on. Hallelujah. There is so much going on. I just want to encourage. I know, I, I know how to exegesis, exegesis, hermeneutics, homiletics, and all that. I'm just kind of like this today. I just want to hear what the Lord has to say because we've been praying, and God wants you to be encouraged in all of your praying. We've been praying. We believe God for some tough stuff. We believe God for some impossible situations. But how many know the giants do fall? Amen. And the bigger they are, come on, somebody, finish it. The harder they fall, amen. And God ain't scared of your giants. <laughs> amen. You might be scared of your giants, but God ain't scared of your giants. Amen. So whatever it is in your life, God is saying, I ain't scared of it. Amen. And we pray because we believe that God will do exactly what he said. And how many know he's going to do it? Amen. Not only did he say it, but he's going to do exactly what he said. Joshua chapter 1, verse 7. Read, sweetheart, in the King James Version. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, Read. that thou mayest prosper Whithsoever thou goest. Listen, listen, I just want to encourage you today, and I don't plan to be before you long. Listen, whatever God has told you, whatever God has showed you in his word, whatever God has shown you through divine revelation, whatever God has brought before you, don't back off of it. No matter what it looks like, don't back off from it. Stick to it, no matter how grim it looks. Come on, somebody. No matter the, what, the way, I don't care if it looked like the favorable or the conditions are not favorable and they're turning worse, I want you to stick to it. Turn not from it, the Bible says. Ask your neighbor, what did God tell you? Now, y'all know I was a school teacher for years, so I kick out and I won't kick back in. I like a participatory audience, amen. That way I know y'all not sleep either. Amen. Whatever he said, don't turn from it. I don't care what God said. If God said your husband going to be saved, your wife, your children, if God said mama is healed, amen, you don't turn away from it. I don't care if God said you're healed. I don't care if your back look like it's, tell, it's pushing your guts out from the front. If God said you're healed, you're healed. You got to have some kind of tenacity to hold on. Don't turn from it. Whatever God said, don't turn from it. Amen. Stick to what God says. You got to put some pressure on the word of God. You got to have some tenacity. You got to hold on to what God says. Amen. It might change, but God don't change. I said it might change, but God don't change. God, whatever God said, he going to stick to it. He going to do it. When mama and them, when my aunt, I had an aunt and she died from it. So what? That don't mean you have to die from it. I don't care if the Pope, Pope John the 92 died from it. You ain't got to die from it. According to your faith. Be it unto you. We don't know the measure of a person's life. We don't know the measure of a person's thing. Because he didn't get the promotion. That don't mean, it means one or two things. One, it doesn't mean you won't get the promotion. Or two, God's got something better for you. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. Don't turn away from it. I don't care. You don't turn away from whatever God said. You're going to have to stick with something. You're going to have to believe God for something. Amen. Verse 8. Read, sweetheart. This book of the law uh -huh. shall not depart out of thy mouth, Read. but thou shalt meditate therein How? day and night, mm -hmm. that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and, and then thou shalt have good success. I want to encourage your heart in the midst of your waiting on your answer prayer. Joshua is giving some specific, direct, targeted, clear, obvious, and no doubt faultless. Come on, somebody. 
unfailless, reliable, guaranteed instruction. And these instructions were all Joshua needed in order to get him to his next level. And I want you to know, just like Joshua, these are the instructions that God is giving you today to get you to your next level. Come on, somebody. And the only prerequisite is you've got to be born again. That's the only prereq to the benefits. That's the only prereq to getting anything from God is you must be born again. When we pray and we give God back his word, we move the hand of God. I have several heavy hitters. Y'all know what heavy hitters is. You know, the ones that can knock the ball right out the ball. I got some uh, heavy hitter points that will make you aware of your responsibility in causing things, blessings, and benefits to come into your life. Elder uh, mentioned it today. God is waiting to bless you. He's not sitting in heaven going, looking at you to make a mistake so he can take you out. Amen. That's the way the church used to make us seem like every time we make a mistake, we like a roach on the floor. God just want to step on us and do away with us. Amen. But I want you to know your God don't want to do away with you. Amen. Jesus came that you might have life. Amen. And not only life, he said, I want you to have it more abundantly. Amen. If he hadn't put that word abundant more in front of it, it would have been good by itself. But since he didn't, he put that word more abundantly, he just don't want you to have abundant life. My God, he wants you to have life till it exceed and it just come goozing and oozing out of your ears. He wants you to have more on top of that. He want to give you some more. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. Wipe your forehead and say, Lord, change my mind. Yeah, we got to think differently. Amen. We got to think we were always taught that God just want to sting us and we can't have nothing. And God don't want us to do nothing but go to church, go to church, and go to church. We can't have no fun. It's just as boring. Hallelujah. But I've been glad since I've been saved. It's I wish, even at 18 when I got saved, I wish I'd have got saved for real. You know, I got saved like a whole bunch of times when I was growing up. Because mama took us to church and we got saved at every YPWW, every children's band, you know, UDAC. Every time you turn around, we got saved at every revival. Amen. But I was just going through the motions. But it was at 18 that I made a turn in my life. Amen. That I just said, you know what, I can't even play with this no more. It's hurting me so bad. It's hurting me so bad. I can't even play with this. I got a calling on my life. You know, some people can run from their call, but I couldn't run from mine. Amen. And, and so what the Lord began to do at 18, he, he began to just... Just, just save me. But the church gave me so many rules, it was discouraging. You can't even go to the movies. One-eyed demon. Lord, have mercy. You got one-eyed demons in your house. <laughs> you, I mean, you couldn't even go to the park. They didn't want you to play softball. You couldn't play marbles. Marbles, because the Bible said marvel not. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they had a lot of religious rules. <laughs> See, some of y'all too young to know about that. They had a lot of religious rules that they would put on you and say that you couldn't do it. Amen. I was a cheerleader for six years. You know, half the church didn't like it because I wore a skirt. And back then, I tri- our, back then, our uniforms were a little bit higher than my skirt is. Okay, I was, you know, they wasn't as low as the generation before me, but they were probably about right like that. And so I put on the skirt. They would almost have a fit because my dress was too short. Well, how am I going to cheer in a maxi skirt? You know, so they had a lot of rules, but, you know, I wasn't under condemnation. Not that I was rebelling or anything. In my spirit, certain things just didn't sit right. Certain things just didn't sit right. Amen. So, you know, but I had to be obedient as long as I was there. I had to be obedient as long as I was there. Don't let nobody tell you. I don't know why I'm over here, but I'm going to stay. Don't let nobody tell you your clothes are going to send you to hell. Don't let nobody tell you you put on pants that you're not saved. Cast the devil out in their lives while, they, while you have on your pants. Amen. Lay hands on them. Come here. Tell them, come here. Let me. T- no, I'm just teasing. But, amen. Don't let, nobody, don't let nobody trip you up. Now, we as women, we should be modest prayer. I don't want to see your, your, you know, your Bessie and May and things like that. We don't want to see that. We dress in model apparel. Amen. But don't let nobody be putting stipulations on you as it relates to your clothes. Amen. Don't let them tell you you can't wear makeup. Thank God for Mary Kay, Oliver Nay, and Shanae. Come on, somebody. Shanae is the one that can put it on your face. Amen. We just thank God for all that. Because we need it all. Come on, somebody. Amen. We, we need it all. Hallelujah. Amen. So it just enhances the beauty. Ain't nothing wrong with enhancements. Amen. Just don't overdo it. Amen. Look like the kindergarten class went to work. Amen. Just don't overdo it. 
We wear everything in modest, but I'm, I'm trying to say the word of God is your final authority. You let the word of God do what he has to do and needs to do in your life. Amen. Amen. Don't let people put trips and all these little crazy things. You can't wear no perm in your hair and, you know, and all that. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I am a candidate for back slismism. <laughs> if I can't have a relaxer, amen. <laughs> Woo. Now, to all you natural sisters, God bless you. <laughs> Love you. Love you like I do. Amen. But I thank God for the process. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for the process. Amen. This ain't got nothing to do with Joshua chapter 1 8. I just thought I'd put it out there because somebody need to be delivered and free. Amen. To stop letting people put you in boxes. If God don't box you up, don't you be boxed up. Come on, somebody. Amen. 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 Woo. Glory to God. You be free. You come to church. Amen. Ain't no dress code up in here. Just put some clothes on. Amen. And don't show yourself. Respect yourself as kingdom women. Come on. Don't wear your clothes tight. Amen. Don't be showing everything mama gave you. Don't reveal it. Keep it a secret for your boy ass. Hallelujah. Glory. Get a man something to think about. Glory to God. Amen. That's good teaching. I think that's good teaching. Come on and give God some praise. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Amen. In verse number one, it said, this book, amen, what book? The book of law, amen, the book of the law, amen. We know that the Torah, uh, Moses wrote, amen, the first five books of the Old Testament, which was called the books of law, the books of Moses, Moses or the Torah, amen. And those were books that Moses, uh, that God gave Moses for the children of Israel, amen. And so our book of the law, our book is all 66 of those books, amen, from Genesis to Revelation. So, the thing, the th thing about this, if I really get into some teaching, I'll be here in a minute, and I can't do it because Joshua only had the law. Woo, Lord Jesus. He didn't have grace. He had mercy. Come on. How much more, hallelujah, that we have grace and mercy. Lord, have mercy. Don't let this book, the books, amen, do not let the books of the Lord from Genesis to Revelation don't let them depart out of your mouth. My God, there's a whole bunch there, but I'll just hit it and go on. Point number one, keep the word of God on your lips. Point number one, don't let the word of God depart your mouth. Keep the word of God on your lips. Amen. Job said it like this in Job 23 and 12. He said, I have not departed from the commandments of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. We should get to the place where we are so hungry for the word of God and God himself where it takes over our natural appetite. We are so engulfed in the word of God. We are so engrafted in the word of God till you just don't want to eat. Have you ever been there where you're just reading the word? You're just so into your study time. You're just so into the time of spending with God till you just hours look up and you be like, man, I ain't ate. I ain't ate breakfast. I ain't lunch. I ain't ate dinner. Hallelujah. That's an ordained fast from God. Amen. Amen. There's a place where you can just fall in love with God and his word so much so that like Job, he said, I, I, I just treasure the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. In other words, rather than going to Burger King today, I'm just going to eat the word of God. Because there are some things that Burger King cannot do for you that the word of God can when, you, when you're going through, you need to take the word of God and apply it to your situation. Amen. A whopper won't do that. Come on, somebody. But I'm going to tell you that the word of God will move like a whopper. Come on, somebody. And it'll whop out that situation that seems impossible in your life. Amen. You can put cheese on that. Amen, somebody. You can supersize the word of God. Amen. I said you can supersize it. And the thing about it, it won't cost you a thing. It's free to take it higher. Come on. Woo, I'm preaching better than y'all saying Amen. <laughs> Amen. We take the word of God. Amen. And we esteem it more higher than our necessary food. Amen. It'll fill you in areas. It'll fill you in your life. Amen. You'll get a hunger. The Bible says he that what? Hunger and thirst after righteousness, you shall be filled. And when you get a hunger like never before after righteousness, my God, it'll fill you like never before. Amen. That hunger in the spiritual will creep over in the natural and take over. But if you ever get hungry in the natural and you ain't got no spiritual substance, you just hungry. Because if you ever get hungry in the spirit and you fill off in the spirit, don't you know to kick over in your natural and take care of you? And I used to understand. I said, ah, now I understand when we didn't have food, how mama 
she didn't eat and she fed us. And she would just be praying. Ha, huh, it's the prayer that she prayed. It sustained her when she took care of her babies. Come on, somebody. Woo, Lord, have mercy. I can understand that better now. Hallelujah, that when you get into the presence of God and you just lose yourself in him, he'll take care of you. Amen, while you take care of your children. Thank you, Mama. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, somebody. Amen. God is so good. Hallelujah. Y'all looking at me like, a, like you're strange, like, oh, for real. Yeah, I want you to try it. Amen. In order to keep God's words on your lips, you have to put it in you first. Got to get the word in your heart. Amen. David said in Psalm 119, 11, we quote it on all the time. Thy word have I hid in my heart. Come on. If we hide the word of God in us, then the proof will be that the God's words will be flowing out of our lips. No matter what you do, don't let the word of God slip from your lips. Amen. So when you face adversity, the word of God will come out of you. John says, sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. You know we're sanctified not because we put on a dress. You know we're sanctified not because we put our hair up in a bun and we don't put on makeup. You know we're sanctified not through legalism terms, but we're sanctified by the word of God. We're sanctified by the washing of the word. The more word we get in us, the less mess come out of us. And we can, we can use a barometer to tell how much word we have in us. In a time of trouble, in a time of our situation, what comes out of our mouth shows us how much we, what we've been putting in our mouth. So we've been putting crap in our mouth when we have a hard trouble or time and somebody flick us off or, or road rage passes up or do us wrong, what's ever in there going to come out? Right. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. So you got to watch what you're putting in you because it'll tell on you. Amen. You cuss out there. Amen. You slip up and get mad in the church. It'll come out. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Tell somebody, put the word in. Put the word in. Put the word in. Put the word in. Amen. Put the word of God, amen, in your heart. Amen. Just meditate. Amen. Just get, on, get in the word of God. Don't let it leave your mouth. Amen. Amen. Then number two, it says, but thou shalt meditate where? Therein how? Day and night. Point number two, meditate. Meditate. This word in the Hebrew means, trans, uh, alliteration means thou how. Thou how. Which means to ponder. Imagine, meditate, it even means to mourn. It means to mutter, to roar, to excord, to speak, to study, to talk, to utter. When are we to do this? Day and night. So we spend time just meditating on the word. Day and night, we won't be in trouble. How long are we to do this? Continue until the Lord come get us. We ought to meditate day and night. So every day, think about it. When from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, we should be meditating on the word of God. Amen. Just think about it. If we just meditate on God's word and, and we have a hunger, it'll change our life. It'll change our situation. Because if, if, you, if you can get up in the morning, we were talking about this yesterday. We're, we were in our beta Satan class. And if you can get up in the morning and not think about God, and today's Sunday, and you got to contemplate whether you're going to come to church in the morning and you say, we really have to motivate. We have to watch our motive. You can get up in the morning and be like, mm, I think I'm just going to go. Now, if you plan a vacation, don't get on the condemnation. You know, if you got to work, don't get on the condemnation. Because if you need to work, you better go. If you're going on vacation, go to church and be here when you get back. Amen, somebody. Now, I'm talking about, you know, you get up every Sunday. It's a struggle. Every Sunday, rather you want to come to church or not. Something's wrong with your relationship with God. Something's wrong with your relationship with God. If you're struggling, every morning you get up and you go, oh, Sunday morning, am I going to church or... Or am I going to, man, I might just, I think I'm going to just do the backyard. Yeah, the, you could have did the backyard yesterday, or you can do it after church. Church don't last that long. Amen. Something's wrong with your relationship. It's, it's just like you dating or you being married. If you get up, I think about Jesus and Daryl all day, every day. Them two don't depart my mind. I think about God, and I think about Daryl Barnett. There's not a day to go by since I've been with that man that I have not thought about him. And, and since I've been saved, there's not been a day that I don't think about God. Because every day when I pray, I make sure I pray for him. I'm praying for him. He's constantly on my mind. Now I got all of y'all on my mind. So every now and then the Lord will pop up somebody else and put him on my mind. But I got you here, Harvest. Believe me, I got you here. I think about y'all every day. Every day I think about Harvest. Every day. Amen. I think about you guys every day. 
Something is wrong if you're in a relationship and you're not thinking about your loved one, the one that you love, your children. I think of my children every day, even if they don't call me. I wonder what they're doing. You know, I'm going to text them. I'm going to find out what they do. Amen. <laughs> Thank God for technology. Amen. I'm going to go on their Facebook page. I'm going to see what they're doing. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sometimes I check on them silently, and I know they're doing okay. I'm like, okay, they responded. They're doing good. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to check on some of y'all. Amen. Hallelujah. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm not. But anyway, <laughs> I know how y'all doing. I know you a liar. Amen. That's a good way for me to inbox you and say I love you. Amen. Hallelujah. But we, when, you, when you love someone, amen, you take it serious. And we take, when we, when we love God, we take meditating on his word serious. And it's for our benefit because it's his word. He trying to help us. Tell somebody he trying to help us when we meditate. Amen. To meditate means to use our mind or our thoughts and our mouth. Do you know you meditate with your mouth? When we meditate, we are to take God, take the word of God, and ponder on it. That means think about it carefully, like Darius did. I think Darius pondered. Every time I see him, he pondered. He, he, he looked like this. That's Darius thing. That's his signature. Every time I see Darius, Darius like this. I said, that boy pondering again. I wonder what he meditating on. He's a thinker. Amen, somebody. But that's what we need to do. Think carefully about it. Amen. Let it sick and sit and soak. Sit and soak on our mind. Do good to them that hate you. We have to let Matthew 5 and 44 sit and soak. Amen. Because if not, then you may not. Amen. You may not do good to them that hate you. So we have to let the word of God sit and soak. Ponder on it. Jesus said, I love them that love me, and those who seek me early shall find me. We have to let Proverbs 8 and 17 sit and soak, because if we love him, we'll seek him. And when we seek him, we're going to be found of him. Meditate in the Hebrew also means imagine. Somebody say imagine. Imagine means you are to form an, an image about the word of God. We need the word of God to clear and purify our minds. How many know that's the truth? The word of God places, uh, replaces, I should say, the word of God will replace the bad and the corrupt mental images and pictures that goes into our mind. The word of God gives in the mind therapy and healing in order to function correctly or properly. The word of God is the number one mind regulator. Amen. When you get in the word of God, it will regulate your thought process. Amen. It will regulate your mind. It'll help us. Um, Paul said it like this in Romans 12. Amen. He said, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a what? Living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2 is what I'm trying to get to. He said, but don't be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the what? Renewing of your Mind, how are we going to get our mind renewed? Now, see, this is, what, this is what tripped me out, the word renew. Everybody say renew. Now, renew means that you have it. And if you have it, it's like your, uh, thank you, Holy Spirit, it's like your license tag. You have to renew it every year. Without fail, you have to renew your license plate every year, okay? Now. If you never had a car, you first have to purchase a car and purchase your tag. That's a purchase, not a renewal. I'm going to teach just a little bit here. In order for you to renew it, you first had to purchase it or get it first. Now, in Romans 12 and 2, be renewed. Be not conformed to this word, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How can we renew our mind if we never had a mind? in the first place to be saved. Because that renew is talking about make your mind new to the standards of God. Let me help you with this. In the garden, Adam had a good mind. God gave him every authority. He gave him dominion, everything he needed. He named every animal. He even called Eve woman, and he named the Eve. Come on, somebody. He had a great mind. But this is what happened. Through his disobedience, his mind changed. The Bible said we were born and shaping in iniquity, 
and in sin did our parents conceive us. So when we were born, we were born into sin. When, you, when a child comes out the womb, you don't have to teach them to do wrong. They're going to do it. Two years old lying. Did you do that? No. <laughs> How in the world? You know, but until, <laughs> did you say that? Me didn't say that. You're three years old. Where you get that from? Four years old. What's in your hand? Nothing. I mean, come on. It's the torment and, of the, and the fear of the punishment that happened, that same punishment in the garden when he drove us out of there. When I'm saying us, because all of us was made through Adam. Amen. When he drove Adam and Eve out, he put a flaming sword there because he didn't want us to stay in a terrible state. Amen. Had they got a hold of the tree of good and knowledge. Amen. So he didn't want us to stay in our bad, in our bad state. So he had, to get, he had to put a flaming sword. Can't you see the love of God? He had to put a flaming sword in the garden to keep them from getting to that tree. I mean, not good in knowledge, but the uh, life, the tree of life, amen, to keep us from being. If they had have eaten of that tree in their sinful state, then we would have been doomed for the rest of our life. But God in his love put a flaming sword in the garden. And because they was turning, in other words, if you get underneath that, you're going to look like a helicopter uh, um, propeller that ate you up. If you try it if you want to, Adam, <laughs> you're going to get killed. So he, he kept them out by putting a flaming sword. But because he committed treason with Satan and he gave up his dominion to Satan, our minds, when we get out, when we get, that's why we have to get saved because we're born in sin. You have to get saved. I don't care how old you are, you have to be saved. Amen. When we get saved, you, you just saved. Your mind is not renewed the day you get saved. You don't know anything about God. You don't know much about God. So when he says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, you take that uh, uh, unto the Lord. And then he said, be not conformed to this world. In other words, don't fashion yourself like this world. Don't act like this world. Don't do, well, how am I going to do like that, God, and I'm in the world? He says, by the renewing of your mind. So you have to renew your mind back to where it was, come on, before Adam sinned. We got to take our mind, mind back. Now, once you get saved, whoo, Lord, I'm ahead of myself, but it's okay, it's okay. Once you get saved and we take the word of God and begin to renew, hallelujah, our mind through the word of God, we put ourselves back to the state before Adam disobeyed. Oh, I wish I could give it to you the way I feel it. That's why you can't fail. We're going to get to that. If we get in the word of God, we renew our minds, we won't think like the world thinks. We won't exercise our minds like the world exercises its mind. We won't, we'll think kingdom thoughts. We start thinking like God. And, and when we start thinking like God, who gives us the ability to call those things that be not as though they were, we can go back where Adam left off. Adam, the Bible calls him the first Adam. First Adam messed us up, but Jesus came as the last Adam, not the second. Because if he was second, then that means there could be a third. From the first, he cut it off. So there is no more chances of us being doomed eternally because Jesus is the last Adam. So because Jesus cut it off with his blood, it enabled us to get back into that place where God has established Adam in the garden before the fall. That's why you can't fail when you know who you are. Woo! You can't fail. That's how come I said, don't give up. Moses is telling him right here, Joshua is saying, listen, you got to meditate on the word. You got to get all this stuff that mama put in you and grandma put in you that was not of God, all the stuff the boys been telling you and the girls been giving you on the street, all this crap you learn, vengeance and getting even and trying to go after folk that hurt you and killed your cat and your dog. He trying to get us to get off that mindset. He trying to get us to strip off those thought process and meditate until we can participate in what the word of God says. When we meditate, we participate with all of what God says because we're pondering it in our heart. Amen. amen. Meditate means, amen, to mutter. We are to mutter, which means to speak to ourselves or speak under your breath. Sometimes you have to just say, 
you, you, sometimes you have to say things under your breath. Lord, I know you're going to do it. God, your word says that by your stripes I'm healed. You in the doctor's office and they gave you a bad report. Amen. Or you in your boss's office and they talking crazy on your job. You ain't got to be out. Oh, the Bible said no. You just mutter. Father, I believe you. Your word never fails. God, I believe the authority of your word. God, you'll supply my need according to your riches and glory by your son. You got to mutter it. And people will look at you like you're crazy. Just put your cell phone Bluetooth on your ear now and then, okay? They thank you on the phone if, you, if it's that deep for you. Amen. See, you can talk now and, and folks don't look at you crazy. You used to talk out loud. Folks look at you crazy. They'd be like, oh, you on the phone? No, I'm on the main line. Yes, I'm on the phone. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm talking to Jesus. Wireless connection. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Amen. I got a wireless connection. So, I, you, so it means to mutter. Amen. And to mutter means to speak to ourselves or under our breath. Meditate means to speak it, talk it, or utter it. Say something out of your mouth. Use your own voice to declare. We declare it. We declare it out of our own mouth. We declare the word of God. The word of God says this. And the word of God says that. Open your mouth. Tell somebody, open your mouth. Amen. Open. When you declare something, you announce it. You got to announce the word of God. Amen. You got to announce the word of God to your situation. You have to announce the word of God to the devil sometimes. You got to tell the devil, here's your announcements for the day. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Sometimes you just got to announce it. You got to declare it in the ears of the devil. You got to open up your mouth. Amen. And you got to say it out of your mouth. Amen. In our meditation, we see the confirmation of scripture. We said around here, Romans 10 and 17, therefore, faith cometh by, hearing. amen, and since faith cometh by hearing, you got to hear something, amen, so that means you're going to have to open up your mouth and say something, amen, we are to say what God says, amen, meditation is personal and private, did y'all know that, meditation is personal and it's private, we are to allow, let, <clears throat> let, let, amen, we are to allow and let, we sometimes allow and let people come in our prayer life, but when it's medication, meditation, amen, it is medication, amen. Medi meditation is medication, amen. Hallelujah. We are, when we're meditating, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost, that's what I needed. When you're meditating, it's personal. Everybody don't come into your meditation. When a doctor prescribes you medication, it ain't for everybody. It's just for you, amen. And so when you meditate, you need to meditate for you. Tell somebody, take your medicine amen. two times a day. Amen. You just take your medicine two times a day. Take it in the morning and take it in the evening. Amen. Don't get religion. You can take it when you get up and take it right before you go to bed. Amen. 12 hours is 12 hours no matter how you slice it. Rather it be 6 to 6, 7 to 7, 8 to 8, 12 to 12. 12 hours is 12 hours. Amen. Don't get on the condemnation. Be talking about, well, I got to pray at 5 in the morning and then do it again at 5. Well, if you're on your job at 5, no, you better not. Ha <laughs> ha. you be on the altar. Amen. Asking for a new job. Hallelujah. We talk, we give information or express how we feel about the word of God. That's what we do when we declare. Tell somebody, meditate daily. Point number three, I'm almost done. That thou may have observed to do according to all that is written therein. Point number three, we must observe and do the word of God. Amen. We must observe and do the word of God. Amen. Observe in the Hebrew means translation. It means shamar. Amen. In the, in the brief definition, it means to keep. So, amen, it means to attend, being careful, be aware. It's like a bodyguard where we protect the word of God, a doorkeeper, guard, keep watch or maintain. We ought to do whatever God has instructed us to do in his word. How many know that's the truth? Amen. Everything that God has told us to do, we need to do it. Pray. God has told us in his word to pray. Didn't he tell us that? Men have to always pray. So that we don't faint. Can you see where, why he would say, listen, you're going to have to meditate day and night? Because in the word we learn we don't pray. We, we must pray. That if we don't pray, we're going to faint. Amen. The word of God, um, Paul told Timothy, he said, you have to study to show yourself approved unto God. You got to study to get God's approval. You don't study to preach. You study to live. Amen. Hallelujah. And as a result of your study and to live, then you might can preach something as you go. Amen. But you don't study because I'm getting ready to get it. Because most people think, Amen, glory. They think they don't have to study because they're not getting ready to preach or they're not getting ready to teach. No, but you study to live. Amen. It didn't say preachers, evangelists, pastors. He just said study to show yourself approved unto God. You get God's approval. When you study and God said, I approve that message. Amen. Hallelujah. When you study, God said, I approve that. Amen. 
You're doing real good. I can use you. Amen. Some of us want to be used, but we're not studying. Amen. The word of God says that we must study. And then in the word of God, it said we're not to give. See, God is doing things strategically in the word that if we meditate upon it, we're setting ourselves up for the good stuff. Come on, somebody. Amen. He said give so that it returns to us. Amen. We must tithe. Tithe so that the A blessing can come into our life and so that we can get some protection. Amen. Because the protection when you tithe that God said, I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. Amen. God will fight the seed eater on your behalf when you tithe. Amen. And then he said, I'm just going to pour out one blessing. Everybody say one. Because all you need is one blessing to set you up for the rest of your life. But we got to do it the way God say do it. Some of us is tipping. We're not tithing. We tithe a little bit. Then we, you know, I got to pay my, my J.C. Benny's charge card. You know? No, no, no. You do that after you tithe. Amen, somebody. Amen. Then the giving is the offering, the alms, the soul seed. And then we got to live holy. The word of God said, he said, be holy for I am holy. Amen. You got to live holy. Amen. That's what the word of God says. Why? You got to live holy because he said it and because he is holy. Amen. We are to love. Amen. Regardless, we are to love. It's not based on people loving you back. We didn't know how to love God and he first loved us. Amen. We have to love. Amen. And then we ought to follow peace with all men. Regardless, if they got a problem with us, we don't have a problem with them. Because the Bible said you have to follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. I want to see Jesus. You, you mean very little to me if it's going to keep me out of heaven. Amen. Now, you do mean something to me. But for me to get in a quarrel with you and the Bible says follow peace with you, I can't get into heaven if I'm not peaceful. That's the word of God. Follow peace with all men. It didn't say follow peace if men follow peace with you. No, it said follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. I want to see Jesus. But even in our everyday situation, if we're not following peace with men and we get in these quarrels and, and these altercations, we ain't following. We can't see Jesus. Where Jesus at? <laughs> Amen. You, you know, you want to send him to Jesus, but you can't do that either. Amen. But we have to follow peace. Whatever he says to do, we must do it. Just like Nike. Nike didn't say it first. Just do it. Amen. <laughs> when we do all, yes, all, all that we're supposed to do, this is what happened. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and have good success. Amen. Point number four. And I'm going to wrap this up. Point number four. Amen. We have a lot to do with the outcome of our lives. We have a lot to do with the outcome of our lives. When we observe and do what God says in his word, we make our way prosperous and we have good success. We the one that, do, that does that. We are the ones who make our way prosperous. Y'all thought it was God with Jesus. No, that's what the word of God said. Then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success. When we line our way ways up and with the word of God we can make our own way prosper why because God is showing us how to deal diligently with people he's showing us how to manage and handle our affairs he's showing us what we need to do in order for the blessing to come upon our life and you thought you had to wait on somebody to make you prosperous and have good success no all you need is the word of God operating fully doing what God said in his word then you will make your own way prosperous and have good success. Abraham said it like this when they tried to offer him something. He said, listen, I ain't going to take nothing from you because I don't, wanna, I don't want man to say they made me rich. He said, I want God to say he made me rich. Amen, somebody. Amen. Don't you know God can make you rich? Amen. I'm not a pro I am a prosperity preacher. And I also preach on healing. I also preach on getting your degree. I also preach on education. I also preach that you got to love. Amen. I also preach whatever God say preach. I'm whatever God say preacher. I ain't stuck nowhere. I ain't got no certain point I point direction in. Whatever God say, that's what we're going to do. Well, right now, we're going to talk about money because you need some to pay your, your mortgage. You need some to pay your car note. You need some so you can bless somebody other than your, your foe and no more. <laughs> and so we do that. By the word of God. If we obey, think about it. If we pray like we're supposed to, give like say, God say give, tithe the way God say tithe, 
live the way God, he can't help but to bless you. That's honorable mention. <laughs> Amen. You are honorable mention when you do what God say do. Amen. But if we, just think about it, if we buck and do the opposite of what God say, look how much mess we put ourselves in. Don't pray and see what kind of life you have. Don't give and see, how, see what comes into your life. Don't live holy and see if you make it to heaven. Don't follow peace and see how much turmoil you have in your life. See the opposites? But God is saying, listen, I came that you might have life, and you have it more abundantly, but you got to do it my way. God said, you got to do it my way, boo. You've been doing it your way all along, and you ain't getting nowhere. Amen. It ain't working. Amen. We got to do it God's way. Amen. Amen. Um, verse 9. Glory, would you read verse 9? And, and I really want to get out of here. Amen. Verse 9. Read, sweetheart. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Woo, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Listen, he said, have not I commanded thee. Now, when you see that word, be at, put your name there. Have not I commanded Lisa. Have not I commanded Daryl. Have not I commanded Sheila. Have not I commanded Mary. Amen. Have not I commanded Shelly. Put your name right there. Have not I commanded Tasha. Have not I commanded Vanessa. Have not I commanded Karen. Come on. Have not I commanded Tara. Have not I commanded James. Have not I commanded Glory. Have not I commanded Sur Surrounder. I can't get your name right. I get you, baby. Have <laughs> I'm going to stop right there because I'm messing up. I'm speaking tongues in a minute. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Have not I commanded Destiny. Amen, somebody. Have not I commanded you? Amen. What if he commanded you to be strong? He don't want you to be cowardly. He don't want you to faint and cave in and quit. The only way you can be strong is to meditate on the word of God and pray. Prayer makes you strong. Prayer makes you bold. The word of God makes you strong. The word of God makes you bold. When you get the word of God, you say, devil, it is written. But you'll never be able to say it's written if you don't read it. <laughs> you don't know it's written if you ain't never read it. Amen. Amen. It's the knowledge that you get through the word of God that makes you strong. Because when you have knowledge about a person, Rob Parsley, when I was in Bible college there, Rob Parsley came down. He would say it often. And one day it hit me. I got a revelation behind what he said. He said, a man with an experience is never at the mercies of a man with an argument. And it hit me. When you've been to hell and high water, when you done been through trouble and turmoil, you don't let some little jelly back person come up and try to persuade you when you know what your God can do. You know if it had not been for God stabilizing your mind, healing your body, you wouldn't have made it. If you, you know if it had not been for God resurrecting your marriage, putting your family back together, you would not have made it. Let somebody come up and talk about, well, it didn't happen at my house. I don't live there. <laughs> Damn, I don't live at your house. But I know what God did for mine. You got to be like Joshua. As for me and my house, we going to serve the Lord. I don't care if everything in there is going left and you're the only one going right. As for me and my house, we going to serve the Lord. I don't care if your son is on drugs and your, and, and, and your husband on them too. As for me and my house, we going to serve the Lord. You got to have a tenacity. It doesn't matter what. I don't care if your husband dating a woman and your wife dating a man. As for me and my house. That's your family. Be strong and of a good courage. If it had been something, if he had said, just be strong and be courage. When he started adding adjectives to the, to the front of words, it makes you go crazy. Good courage. More abundantly. <laughs> You'd be like, okay. Okay, I got it. He don't want you to just be courageous. He wants you to be of a good courage. Come on, somebody. Amen. Then he said, listen, when, when we are... When we are strong enough with good courage, then he says, listen, don't be afraid. Lift your name and say, don't be scared. Amen. Don't be scared. I don't care what the devil is trying to do on your job. I don't care what he's trying to do in your finances. I don't care what, what's going on in your house. I don't care if everything looks crazy. I don't care what the doctor said. Don't be scared. 
You don't be scared. Amen. Do not be afraid. Neither be dismayed. Don't be discouraged. When he just told you to be courageous, he said, listen, he said, listen, this is a consolation. He said, because the Lord thy God is with you wherever you go. The consolation is he said, listen, when you go take that test tomorrow, I'm going to be with you. He said, listen, when you go on that job tomorrow, I'm going to be with you. Amen. 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 He said, when you're driving down the highway, I'm going to be with you. That's, that's encouraging. Now, you want a lot of people with you, but I want God with me. I love Pastor Dale, and I love when he go places with me. But the truth be told, and you should always tell the truth, I really want the Lord to be with me. Amen. Because I know if God is with me, he can help me. Amen. I, I, I want you with me too. Amen. Hallelujah. And let me make that plain. <laughs> Hallelujah. I love God. How many love the Lord? Amen. I want you to know that God is with you. Amen. He said, I'll never leave you. He used a strong word. See, we always say, never say never. Amen. But wherever God say never, you say never. Amen. I said, wherever God say never, you say never. Amen. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Now, that got me right there when he added that forsake. Because leave is one thing and forsake is another. Some people leave you and they forsake you. Some people will forsake you, which is the stronger of the leaving between the two. But some people leave you and they forsake you in their mind. They can leave you and forsake you in their heart. You can exist in a home with somebody and they not be there because they've forsaken you. But God said, I'm never going to leave you, nor. His love is so strong for us. I say it all the time. He said, listen, though a woman forgets the seed of her womb, and though she forget the child that's on the breast, something wrong with that woman. You're going to forget the seed of your womb. Do you remember how that feel? A, wo- a child is on your breast. Do you? He said, though she forgive you. He said, though she forget you, I'm not. Because I've engraved you in the palms of my hand. He said, your walls are before me day and night. God said, I love you so much. I can't forget you. You right here. Your walls are before me day and night. Can you see why God said meditate day and night? Because he said, your walls are before him. Come on, somebody. Give the balance. His, our walls are before God day and night. And it's like access. So when we meditate day and night, we access the walls that before God day and night. Did you learn anything? Did you get anything? Come on and stand to your feet. Come on and clap your hands. Woo! Hallelujah. Come on and clap your hands before the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This altar call, listen, I want to talk to those of you who are saying, Pastor Lisa, I don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. You've never asked Jesus to come.